Hi, I'm Gidon from thetechnologyman.com. The Blue Yeti EB70 portable power station has two 1000 watt AC outlets, two 100 watt USB power delivery outputs, and a long lasting 716 watt hour LFP or lithium ion phosphate battery. These power stations are perfect for power cuts, camping, travel, and festivals, and around the house and out and about to charge all your tech. And the EB70 can charge up to 200 watts off solar panels when mains isn't available. I'll be testing it with Blue Yeti's 200 watt PV200 solar panel later in the review. I'll run through its capabilities and thoroughly test all its claims to help you decide if this is the right power station for you. And towards the end of the video, I'll compare it to other similar power stations around the same price. So let's take a closer look. Inside the box, you get the power station itself, the AC adapter, a car charging cable, a solar charging cable, and the user manual. The EP70 has a 716 watt hour LFP battery that supports over 2,500 charge cycles and weighs 9.6 kilograms, excluding the AC adapter. This is the first power station I've looked at in a while that comes with an AC adapter rather than the far more convenient and faster mains charging. And it's a large and heavy adapter at that, weighing just under one kilogram. I'll come back to charging the unit shortly. The slightly smaller 716 watt hour battery and external AC adapter does make this fairly compact for a power station with a still very respectable 1000 watts of output. A carry handle folds out from the top of the unit to carry it around with one hand. You can see its dimensions on screen. It's made almost entirely of a hard plastic and there's very little flex. Only time will tell how durable it is, but it doesn't feel quite as premium as some power stations I've looked at. And typically it has no weatherproof rating, so you'll need to be careful using it outside. All the inputs and outputs are on the front of the unit. Along the top, there's a single charging input top left, a small LCD screen, and a spotlight. The screen is a very basic affair by modern standards. It only shows the battery level graphically in large 20% steps, and although you can see the current input and current output power, there's no estimate of remaining charging and running time. It's just about visible outside in bright sunlight. The spotlight torch has a low, high, and flashing mode operated with its own button. It's useful, but I'd much prefer a floodlight. The unit is a little large to carry around as a torch. Below the input ports are the DC outputs. There are two very welcome 100 watt USB-C power delivery ports, two standard 5 volt 3 amp USB sockets, two 12 volt 10 amp DC5521 ports, and a standard 12 volt 10 amp car outlet. These DC outputs, as well as the 15 watt wireless charging pad on top of the unit, are all operated by the DC outputs power button. Finally, there's the AC subsystem with two 240 volt 1000 watt pure sine wave AC outlets, again operated with their own power button. All these power buttons turn on with a single press and off with a long press. Unfortunately, there's no app to operate the unit, but there is limited configuration on the power station itself. There's an eco mode which turns the unit off after four hours of little or no activity to save power. Press and hold the AC and DC power buttons together until the frequency flashes, then press the DC button to toggle eco mode. A dedicated eco button would have been far more convenient. Turn eco mode off if you're running low power devices that consume less than 10 watts or any device that uses power intermittently, like fridges and CPAP machines. In the setting mode with the frequency flashing, be careful not to press the AC button, which will switch the EB70 to 60 Hertz mode, which you don't want in the UK at least. You can charge the unit via mains with the included AC adapter, a car outlet with a supplied cable, or via solar with a supplied adapter and optional solar panels. I'm pleased to see Blue Yeti supplying the MC4 to around 7.9mm adapter, especially since this isn't the easiest cable to get hold of. I do prefer the more standard XD60 input many power stations have. Even though there are two 100 watt USB-C ports, you can't use them to charge the unit like you can with the EcoFlow River 2 Max for example. Charging off mains is the power station's weakest feature. Direct mains charging is so much easier and faster too. And the charger is huge and doesn't feel particularly rugged. It's rated at 200 watts, 25.2 volts at 8 amps, and fully charged the EB70 in around 4.5 hours, which is still a little faster than some jackeries I've tested, but slow by modern standards. I measured around 49 decibels with a sound level meter one meter from the power station. That was around 13 decibels over background noise. You won't want to sleep next to it charging. I checked the temperatures with a thermal imaging camera as you can see. It was a pretty warm day and parts of the power station and charger were warm to the touch but not hot. 
the LED on the AC adapter changes from red to green when it's fully charged. Frustratingly, the AC adapter has a small noisy fan that runs continuously even after it's finished charging, so you have to remember to unplug it. You can charge using both a 12 volt and 24 volt car outlet at up to 8 amps. Using my van's 12 volt socket, I got around 110 watts, which would charge the unit in around 8 hours. Using a bench power supply, I tried charging at 24 volts and a little over, which is pretty much as fast as using the AC adapter, around 200 watts. Finally, I tested charging via solar. The EV70 has a built-in MPPT controller for more efficient solar charging and supports an input between 12 and 28 volts, again with the 8 amp current limit. You can use any solar panel with standard MC4 connectors within that voltage range, but I tested the power station with Bluetti's PV200 200 watt folding panel. I've tested quite a few solar panels and this has become one of my favorites. It weighs just under seven kilograms, which isn't bad for a 200 watt panel, and its built-in carry handle makes it easy to transport. Setup is pretty quick. You just unfold it and it rests on its built-in supports, which can tilt at an adjustable angle depending on how high the sun is in the sky, or you can just lay it flat. Then connect the solar panel's MC4 connectors to the solar charging cable supplied with the EB70 and plug this into the power station. The panel has an open circuit voltage of 26.1 volts. So it's a pretty good match for the EB70. On a sunny day in June in the UK, I got around 140 watts, which isn't bad at all and would fully charge a unit in around six hours. Two similar panels connected in parallel should easily achieve the 8 amp 200 watt maximum. But the 200 watt limit for any of the charging inputs is a little on the low side compared to other power stations that might be on your shortlist. Also, with just the one input, you can't charge via, say, the mains adapter and solar at the same time. The Blue Eti EB70 has a 1000 watt inverter which can power many devices around the home. Blue Eti provides a few sample devices and their predicted run times, but I'll show some real life examples shortly. This UK version has two outlets, the US version has four. The US version appears to only have an 800 watt inverter. I confirmed their pure sine wave output, which is important for sensitive electronics with a graphical multimeter. These outlets can surge briefly to 1400 watts, according to Bluetti. First off, I tried a fan heater in its 1000 watt mode, which the power station ran continuously just fine. I could also run this Crock-Pot Express multi-cooker in its saute mode at just under 1000 watts, and it happily run the slow cook modes for much longer. I did expect it to run my Nespresso coffee machine, which is rated at 1250 watts, but it immediately triggered the current overload protection. I checked the coffee machine with an energy monitoring plug and it pulls just over 1300 watts initially, which is still below the EB70's 1400 watt rated surge output. Bluetti doesn't specify how long it can maintain this 1400 watts, but it must be a very short time. If you do overload the AC outlets, you can just press their power button to reset. It could easily run the milk frother at just over 400 watts. Next up, I tried a few power tools, starting with my Bosch 720 watt grinder. This doesn't have a soft start, so it's always a good test but it ran perfectly with the Bluetti, as did a 650 watt Ryobi SDS drill, but a bigger 1250 watt Titan SDS drill was too much for it. Even running at close to 1000 watts, it's not too noisy. I measured around 45 decibels one meter away, similar to when it's charging, but without the additional noise of the AC adapter. And it didn't get too hot either, as you can see from the thermal imaging camera recording. If you have eco mode turned off, you need to remember to turn off the AC subsystem manually, with its fairly rough battery gauge, I couldn't precisely measure the AC's parasitic drain, how much the inverter itself consumes. But the unit did get quite warm with just AC on and nothing plugged in. I tested the DC outputs, starting with a 12 volt car outlet, which is rated at 10 amps, which I confirmed with the load tester. I got around 125 watts peak output. I only had to ramp this up a fraction over 10 amps to trigger the current overload protection. The DC5521 outputs have the same rating and performed almost identically. The two standard USB-A ports are rated at 5 volts, 3 amps, which I also tested with the load tester. They don't support any fast charging standards, but I ramped these all the way up to 3.7 amps, and the voltage still remained over 5 volts. There are generous two 100 watt USB-C power delivery ports. I ran these both at full output, one of them charging an EcoFlow River 2 Max, and the other a Gulu GT3000 Jump Starter. They are also great for charging the latest MacBook, or any laptop that can charge over USB-C power delivery. Finally, I tested the wireless charging pad. This supports up to 15 watts and charged my iPhone 13 Pro up to 10 watts according to the power station's display. Without direct mains charging, there's no uninterruptible power supply or UPS support. 
Another very useful feature of some of these power stations, and I missed having it on the EB70. All ports support pass-through charging and can be used whilst the unit is charging. Finally, I measured the usable capacity of the 716 watt hour LFP built-in battery. I ran a heater via an energy monitoring plug at just under 1000 watts until the power station turned off. The heater ran for 36 minutes and 11 seconds and consumed 564 watt hours. So a fairly disappointing 79% efficiency. Power stations like this will always have conversion losses and Bluetty also mentions a 90% depth of discharge. So the unit is therefore shutting off before it's entirely empty to protect the battery. I did also run this test at close to the EB70's maximum output so heat losses will be exaggerated. Next I measured the capacity of the DC car output at 8 amps or around 100 watts using a load tester. The power station performed considerably better consuming 639 watt hours which works out as an efficiency of 89%. So if you're running something like a fridge that comes on intermittently, I'd try and run it off DC with the eco mode and AC outlets turned off. The Blue Yeti EB70 has been out for a while, at least the US version, and it does show. It's missing a lot of the features I've come to expect with these portable power stations. There's no direct mains charging, no UPS, a basic LCD display, and no app. I'm really not keen on the clunky and noisy AC adapter, but if you're buying this to run off solar or your car outlet, that won't be an issue. Bluetti are one of the first companies to standardise on the longer lasting LFP battery technology, and the 716 watt hour battery in the EB70 should last over 2,500 cycles, and even then, it's meant to still have 80% of its original capacity. Although it is disappointing that Bluetti only offers a two year warranty on this specific unit. It also has a very good range of outputs. I particularly like the two 100 watt USB C power delivery ports and the wireless charging pad. Bluetti have opted for a slightly lower capacity battery to pair with a capable 1000 watt inverter. I quite like this, it keeps the weight down a bit and if you're able to keep it topped up when you can, you should have plenty of capacity for most day to day devices. It worked very well paired with the 200 watt PV200 panel, also from Bluetti, but there are plenty of cheaper options if you don't need something as convenient and portable. The 200 watts charging limit seems a little restrictive, but it's a decent match with solar for a power station at this price point. You're not going to want to spend more on solar panels than you spent on the unit itself. Which brings me to the price. Since it's not the latest model, there are some good deals available. The US version, albeit with a smaller inverter, is only around $500 at the moment. The UK version is under £600, which is still pretty competitive, but I personally wouldn't pay its RRP of £800. Its closest competitor is probably the EcoFlow River 2 Pro, which is currently a little more expensive. It has a smaller 800 watt inverter, only one 100 watt USB-C port, but it has a slightly larger battery, faster mains charging, weighs less and has app support. If you don't need the larger inverter and can cope with a slightly smaller battery, Blue Yeti have the EB55 and EcoFlow have the River 2 Max I looked at recently. And they're both considerably cheaper. I've reviewed quite a few power stations on this channel. I'll provide a playlist down below if you're interested. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think of the Blue Yeti EB70? Is it on your shortlist? And if you have it, what do you think of it? Is there anything I've missed? As always, if you have any questions, please ask. I read every comment and will do my best to respond. I do hope you found this video useful. Please like the video if you did. I'm releasing videos every week on the latest technology and how to get the most out of it. So please make sure you subscribe. And don't forget to tap the bell icon if you want to get notified as soon as a new video gets uploaded. Thanks for watching.